Okay, on Friday, the IRS surprisingly apologized for the targeting of Tea Party and other conservative groups. Now, I say surprisingly because nobody asked them for an apology. Why did it come out? They, they, um, they claimed that upper brass at the IRS had no idea what was happening. They said on Friday that it was just a few low-level people in Cincinnati, Ohio, that were just responsible for this crazy mix-up. Here's how the IRS Commissioner Douglas Shulman responded to the criticisms. This is back in 2012. He said, there is absolutely no targeting. This is the kind of back and forth that happens to people. Now, this is people who apply for tax-exempt status. But the truth is, an investigation revealed as early as the middle of 2011, high-ranking IRS officials knew that conservative groups were being inappropriately targeted an entire year before, before Shulman said, it's not happening. So not only was he wrong about the targeting, obviously they admitted to that, and they, they knew it happened, we know it happened. But he also lied about his knowledge of the practice. They targeted any group with Tea Party, Patriot, or 912 Project in their name. They targeted any group that was critical of this administration. They targeted any group that taught the Constitution. Or my favorite, they targeted any group that, quote, wanted to make America a better place to live, end quote. Wow. This president, early, um, uh, earlier today, called the revelations, quote, outrageous. Listen to this. If, in fact, uh, IRS personnel engaged in uh, the kind of practices that have been reported on uh, and were intentionally targeting uh, conservative groups, then that's outrageous. And there's no place for it. Uh, and, uh, you know, they have to be held fully accountable because okay. the IRS, as an independent agency, requires absolute integrity, and people have to have confidence that they're applying it in a nonpartisan way, uh, applying the laws in a nonpartisan way. Isn't that great? I love that. Well, they have to have integrity. Okay, so he said a couple of things here. He said, first of all, that it is a separate, independent agency. Here's the White House, here's the IRS. Mm. Well, there's one place in between. To believe that the IRS is independent is to not understand, oh, the Constitution. The Treasury Department. The White House has the Treasury Department. And the Treasury Department has the IRS executive, executive branch. And, and let me ask you this. No one notified the President of the United States? Are you, are you serious? Because in this press conference, he said, I found out about it in the newspaper. In the newspaper? First of all, you still read one? <laughs> no one called and gave the President the heads up that a huge political problem was coming. Not even a word, even after he read it in the newspaper. Okay, that doesn't, I don't, I don't buy that for a second. You should fire that person. A nonpartisan office, it's not. The IRS is under the Department of the Treasury. The Department of the Treasury is under the executive branch. This is under the president's jurisdiction. There's another bit of news not wildly reported in this story. Conservative Tea Party groups are not the only ones who are targeted by the same division of the IRS. Also, the pro-Israel groups were. What a surprise. In 2010, the pro-Israel organization Z Street was sued. Um, they, they Actually, I'm sorry, they sued the IRS because, um, well, they had this, this ridiculously long application that they had to fill out. They were told by IRS agents that they, um, they, because they were connected to Israel, they had to receive additional scrutiny. Really? Z Street was also told by the IRS agent that their application, quote, went let me get this right, to a special unit in the D.C. office to determine whether the organization's activities contradict the administration's public policies. Wow. Why does the IRS even have a division like that? Because that kind of sounds like tyranny. Kind of sounds like something that would trample our constitutional rights. That makes the office um, in the IRS uh, a weapon in the hands of our president.
The, also, the IRS also required Jewish organizations to answer, quote, whether it supports the existence of the land of Israel. Why does the IRS need to know that? Also wanted them to, quote, describe its religious belief system toward the land of Israel. Gang, these are the people that are going to be watching over your health care. Here's where it gets really insane. The IRS said they only did all of this because it's a country where terrorism happens. And so the IRS said they were justified in taking the additional time to determine whether Z Street was involved in funding terrorism. I, let's, get the, let's see if we have this right here. Uh, the administration is totally cool with the Muslim Brotherhood. They're totally a friend. Yeah, Radical Islamic rebels in Syria, total friend. Pro-Israel groups here in America, enemy? Really? This is especially insulting when you consider that radical mosques here in America often receive funding from the government, like the Islamic Society in Boston, where the government allowed the uh, Islamic Society uh, to purchase land worth $2 million for 175000 But in return, the citizens got free books and Islamic lectures. You can't put a price tag on that, can you? Actually, we can. Four dead Americans, hundreds maimed and injured at the Boston Marathon. Ironic. You know, it hit me today. We have been telling you that this is Crime Inc. for a while. It's a Chicago crime syndicate running our country right now. And what is amazing to me is even with Benghazi, Four Americans are dead. They've run guns, not only in Benghazi, but they run them across our own border. How many people have died in Mexico? Out of all of the things that this crime family in Washington has done, wouldn't it be appropriate if they were taken down by the same organization that took down Al Capone, the IRS? Back in a minute.